Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. A little bit more about third-party value evaluations. Are you concerned about the value you are receiving from your engineering designs? Are you concerned about safety issues or getting the best equipment for the service? AES provides an independent third-party value-added reviews of static and rotating equipment. A bit more detail about training and certification. AES provides training and certificate certification for workers. Did you know that 60% of workers claim that training and development is the most important policy for a company, so the, uh, for their careers? A training program with certification is available online and instruction is provided by highly skilled, experienced engineers. If there's any specific topic you wish to be reviewed, please contact us at AES. Equipment re-rating. Operators are constantly looking for ways to improve efficiency and reduced costs. This may require changes in flow rates, for example, or, or, or changes in pressure. Equipment upgrades may be required for more efficient modern technology. AES provides management of change methodology in conformance to API and CSA. We work closely with industry standards and equipment manufacturers to get great results. Here's an outline of what we're going to go through today. A, a comparison between API 620 and 650 tanks, a, a discussion about API tank standards for 620, which is the design summary, applications, annex, materials, and design procedures. So far, we've covered API 12B, D, F, which are the package specs, and P, which is the FRP. This presentation is focused on API 620, and the next session will be about API 650. Again, our comparison of API 620 and 650 tanks. API 620 tanks can store contents at a lower temperature and pressure. API 650 tanks permit a lower amount of pressure as compared to 620, but can work at a higher temperature. So 620 is almost like it, it has cryogenic uh, applications. 650 is more for higher temperature fluids. Both API 620 and 650 tanks are permitted to be constructed from carbon steel, austenitic stainless steel, and nickel alloys. Both standards require ASME welding certification. Both standards require NDE inspection. Note that third-party inspection is not required. Enclosed is a summary table of API 620, the design. Note a couple things, the, the design capacity, um, there is no specific requirements like the series 12. The, the definition of an API 620 tank is classified as the, um, it has to be symmetrical about the vertical axis of revolution. So that would include flat bottom tanks and spheres. The internal pressure is limited to 100 kPa or 15 psig. The external pressure must be at least one inches, and if beyond that, it needs to be done by design. If you invoke 
uh, annex Q, you can get down to minus 325 Fahrenheit or 198 centigrade. More aspects to cover on API 620 tanks. They're large storage tank capacity. They have finished product where the intermediates, that's the gas and the vapors, the vapor has to be greater than 2% of the capacity. Field fabrication procedures are provided and inspection and testing and examination procedures are provided. Very specific details. A few interesting aspect about the annex found at the end of API 620. Annex L has to do with the design of seismic. Annex N is vacuum and pressure design relieving procedures. Annex Q and R and S have to do with cryogenic and low temperature applications. An aspect of API 620 is the large amount of material requirements and controls that are required and it has to do with the low temperature requirements. So uh, for example, talk about plate. Uh, in the last 20 years, API has done a lot to make their standard more international and they've moved away from just a ASTM materials and included CSA, ISO, and EN materials. Plate materials and thickness there's limits on them, and that's to improve the, the impact properties or uh, to achieve the minimum design metal temperatures needed for cryogenic and low temperature service. There's alloy restrictions as well to improve the low impact properties and manufacturing restrictions as well. We'll talk about pipe flanges, forgings, and castings. API 620 refers to ASTM specifications, which have certain specs for low temperature applications. For example, for flanges, you would use an API 350 L, and, and then there would be the, the classifications for those as well below that. So ASTM has minimum design temperature requirements. Structural, it has specific uh, specifications which are permitted to be used for API 620. 620 has some interesting um, annexes in them. There are several of them, but the ones that I would like to draw to your attention is Annex X, S which is for austenitic stainless steels for those cryogenic applications where you need to have low um, temperature materials with the impact properties needed. Uh, S and C stainless steel carbon steel materials to cut down on the costs. And another one that's been added in the last few years is called Annex X, which is for duplex. Now, there are a lot of design procedures um, which makes up most of the, of the manual. There are for tank walls. There's a, a section for side walls, roofs, and bottoms. There's a special considerations applicable to the bottoms that rest directly on foundations. There's the design of the roof and bottom knuckle regions of the compression ring girders. There are shape locations and maximum sizes of wall openings, inspection openings, reinforcement of single openings, reinforcement of multiple openings, and all, all specs have, you'll see then in 650, and in the pressure vessel code, there's very specific requirements for openings. Design of large centrally located openings in roofs and on the bottoms. Nozzle necks and their attachments to the tank. There's very specific weld sizes and, and, and rules about where to place them on the tank, uh, where the seams are, and there's an increase in the requirements. 
bolted flanges connections, cover plates. Load combinations are something that are considered in API 620 and 650 tanks to ensure that combinations of, of items don't um, overpressure or overstress the tank and cause potentially cause damage. The, here are some of the key elements, dead loads. So that includes tank weights, uh, insulation, lining, and, or corrosion allowance hydrostatic loads, connection loads, roof live loads, combination elements considered are internal and external pressure, seismic, and snow loads, and of course wind loads. The both of those, these snow loads and the seismic, they're based upon the American standards. So say for in Canada, you would have to follow the national building code for wind loads and 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 work with your client to determine uh, whether they want the one in 20 year wind loads or one in 100 a year wind loads. And so um, those are some aspects that you have to uh, be aware of. A couple comments about allowable stresses. There, API 620 calculates maximum tensile and compressive stresses. They determine them individually and combined so that you can get the coinciding um, from the load combinations. Also, the weld joints are also determined, and that's determined by by the the allowable joint designs within api 620 and they have specific factors which derate this stresses which basically acts like a stress concentration type riser so that's that's their philosophy they use these efficiencies to um, determine the design of the weld i hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you this was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.